Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about the six kingdoms of life. I hope you enjoy. What are the six kingdoms of life? All life on earth is classified into six kingdoms. These kingdoms classify life on how well they fit into each kingdom based on their cell structure, how they act, whether they eat or if they use photosynthesis, whether they are uni or multicellular, and other characteristics. Today, we will be taking a look at all the different types of kingdoms and how they are different from one another. The six kingdoms we will be talking about are Animalia, Plantae, Fungi, Protista, Eubacteria, and Archaebacteria. Animalia Animalia is the first kingdom that we'll be studying today. The kingdom Animalia is one of the most diverse kingdoms, ranging from mammals, fish, insects, lizards, and almost anything else that you can see with your bare eye and moves. Organisms that are classified in the Animalia kingdom all share quite a few things in common with one another. Organisms in the Animalia kingdom are heterotrophic, meaning they eat and get energy from the stuff that they eat. They do not have cell walls in their cells. They have membrane bound organelles in their cells. They are multicellular and that they are eukaryotic, meaning that they carry their nucleus and all their RNA and DNA in a membrane bound section of their cell. Plantae Plantae is our second kingdom on our list. You may be very familiar with this kingdom as it is all around in the form of flowers, trees, lily pads, and just all plants in general. The organisms in this kingdom are mostly green as they all use photosynthesis, but this kingdom is just as diverse as the Animalia kingdom too. Organisms that are classified in the Animalia kingdom all share quite a few things in common with one another, such as almost always being in the very bottom of every food chain in the whole world. Organisms in the Plantae Kingdom are autotrophic, meaning that they use photosynthesis and energy from the sun. They do have a cell wall. They have membrane-bound organelles just like how animals do. They are multicellular, and they are also eukaryotic, just as animals. Next, we will be talking about fungi. Fungi is the third kingdom that we will be ta talking about. These include both single and multicellular organisms such as yeast and various types of mushrooms. Many multicellular fungi may look like plants in the way that they are rooted and they are also non-moving, but they are not plants because they are heterotrophic, meaning that they eat other animals and they get energy from the stuff that they eat. Organisms that are classified in the fungi kingdom are all a few things common with one another. They're all decomposers, meaning that they only eat animals that are already dead for their nutrients. Organisms in the fungi kingdom are heterotrophic, like I said before. They do have a cell wall, just like normal plants. They have membrane-bound organelles, just like plants and animals. They are multicellular or unicellular. And they are also eukaryotic. Protista. Protista is the last kingdom that has multicellular organisms at all. This kingdom is known as the junkyard kingdom, where if someone is not in the last three kingdoms I talked about, it's most likely going to be in this one. The Protista kingdom includes algae and even kelp. So that means kelp isn't technically a plant. Weird, right? Organisms that are classified in the Protista kingdom all have a few things in common with one another. This kingdom is actually a mix of heterotrophs and autotrophs, meaning it's filled with animals 
and organisms that get energy like either plants or animals. Organisms in the Protista Kingdom are both heterotrophic and some are autotrophic. Some have a cell wall and some have a membrane. They have membrane bound organelles and they are both unicellular or multicellular depending on which one you check. They are eukaryotic also, as in they have nucleuses that are membrane bound. Eubacteria. Eubacteria is the penultimate kingdom that we'll be talking about and it will only consist of single celled organisms. Unlike many people think, eubacteria are not all bad for our bodies. Some of them actually aid us in digestion and are vital for us to live. Although, be warned that there are some dangerous bacteria too, like E. coli, which can kill you. Eubacteria are the common bacteria you mostly see on TV. Eubacteria are bacteria that move around using a flagellum, a tail-like appendage used for movement. And, like plants and fungi, and some protists, they have cell walls. So, in short, Organisms in the eubacteria kingdom are heterotrophic and some are autotrophic. Just like plants, all of them have a cell wall. These guys don't have any membrane bound organelles. They are unicellular and they are prokaryotic, meaning that they do not have their DNA and RNA all stored in a membrane bound organelle. Instead, they are just floating in the cytoplasm. Archaea bacteria. Archaea bacteria is the last kingdom for today. This kingdom may not look too different from EU bacteria. That was why before these two groups were put in, were actually put in one group. Now that we have better tech, we learn that archaea bacteria are radically different because of how some of the structures that they share with bacteria are all made with different compounds. Archaea bacteria are actually very tough organisms which are found at the extremes of the earth. A lot of these organisms are considered extremophiles because of the dangerous conditions they live in. They can live in intense heat, frigid cold, and even low oxygenated places. Organisms in the archaea bacteria kingdom are heterotrophic and some are autotrophic. And just like plants, all of them have a cell wall. These guys do not have membrane bound organelles. And they are unicellular. And again, just like bacteria, they have their nucleus floating around in the cytoplasm and not in any membrane-bound organelle. Goodbye, and I hope you like this video. Thank you.